Hi, my name is Keith Byram, and today I'm working with Somerset Baptist Church, and we have been preparing weekly Sunday school lessons for those who have not been able to go to church or Sunday school. We hope these are helpful. We've certainly enjoyed uh, uh, giving them, and we hope that you've enjoyed them as well. Today we would be, we will be studying the last part of the series on Noah and the Ark found in Genesis. Uh, but before we start, let's uh, turn this over to God in prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to read your word. Thank you for the story of Noah and for what it means to us as we understand your plan. And we thank you for that divine plan, Father, and we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that all of it comes together through Jesus, and that we, if we believe in him as our Lord and Savior, that we will find joy in our heart and we will live abundantly. Father, we pray that you could lead us and guide us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to be reading uh, the ninth chapter of Genesis, and I will uh, stop from time to time, but mostly I'm going to be reading. And uh, as we conclude this chapter from uh, Genesis, and we will read from 9. So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Now you will recall that there was another time that uh, God said those same words, and that was when uh, Adam and Eve came into the world and he commissioned them to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And that's what uh, Noah was going to do now that the flood is over. And, and everybody on earth, all the animals and men were destroyed, leaving uh, Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their three daughters, I mean, their three wives. So now it's upon them to repopulate the earth. It's hard for us to think about and believe it, but it's what the Bible says. And he did it the first time, and he did it, now he can do it again. Number two, and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air, and all that move on the earth, on all the flesh of the sea. They are given unto your hand. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. So this is a different uh, difference, uh, perhaps. It's not clear to me, but uh, some of the commentators I have read have said that this was a change. And the change was is that now man was able to utilize living things as food. And there were many different kinds of animals, deer, and cattle, and uh, could go on and on of kinds of uh, animals that he could use for food. And uh, the meat of animals has is high protein and uh, gives man strength. Uh, to do work, and he's required to do that now for a couple of reasons. One is uh, things changed after the flood, and he no longer will live those long, long lives that they have had. And the earth, if you remember, the, one of the punishments for Cain was that he would now have to live and work on the land, and there would be thorns and other uh, difficulties that he would have. And so he needed this strength that he would get, the protein that he would get from animals. Number four, but you shall not eat flesh with its life. 
that is its blood. Surely for you life blood I will be I will demand a reckoning. In other words, if you take somebody's life of a of a man that God will will uh, demand a reckoning. From the hand of every beast I will require it, and from the hand of man, from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of man. Now here he's saying that for all of us, we will have to die. We've talked about this before in this session, that this is what God demands of us, that he provides us this life and he therefore can take it and does take it from us. Number six, whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God, he made man. So God made man in his image, and if we shed somebody else's blood, if we murder somebody, uh, then again, there will be a reckoning, reckoning. And for you, be fruitful and multiply, being forth abundantly in the earth and multiply in it. Number eight, then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him saying, and as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and the, every beast on the earth with you. Of all that, go out in of the ark, every beast of the earth. Thus, I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all the flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The water shall never again become a flood to destroy the earth. The rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all the earth that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant which I shall establish between me and all flesh that is on the earth. So God established this covenant, covenant that he would not destroy the earth and through a flood as he had before. Now we go to 18. Noah and his sons. <clears throat> now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark with, were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah. And from these the whole earth was populated. And Noah began to be a farmer. And he planted a vineyard. And then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in the tent. Well, I, I, I don't know that they had wine before this time or not, but probably Noah hadn't. And so he uh, had a good vineyard and made the wine and he drank it and uh, apparently he got drunk. Number 22, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders 
and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not uh, see their father's nakedness. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Uh, number 25. Then he said, this is Noah speaking, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants. He shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem. And may Canaan be his servant. Now, this is a, there's an interesting debate about uh, what this chapter means. And it's not easy to read. It's one of those that you have to wonder what did, and you wonder and think, what did God mean by this? Uh, obviously, uh, Noah had done something wrong. Uh, but he must have really done something wrong to, uh, and yet we're not sure exactly. It could have been that Noah did something wrong, but where the real problem here is what his son did. Uh, and his son Ham had exposed his father to ridicule and embarrassment to his brothers. So remember, there's not very many people on the earth at this time, and so he was exposed and embarrassed to, uh, to his sons, and that was like uh, two of the uh, six or seven people on earth at this time. And so then Noah curses Canaan. Some have suggested that maybe it's really not a punishment, but it is a prophecy of what is going to happen to Canaan and the descendants of Canaan, the son of Ham. Uh, also, what is going to happen to uh, Shem and uh, Japheth for uh uh, Noah blessed them. And we know that Shem goes on to be in the line from Seth to Jesus. So this reinforces that line and reinforces the cursing of Canaan, which we've already uh, seen and heard in the past. So it could be Oh, and also notice it wasn't Ham who was cursed. It was his son, Canaan. So this is one that we really have to think about. But in the long run, the two main points is Canaan was cursed and Shem was blessed. Number 28. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years So all the days of Noah were 950 years, and then he died. And that's the end of the chapter, and that's the end of the discussion of Noah. Well, it was uh, one of the uh, most complicated and complex chapters of the Bible, and really one of the most significant if we consider that the world, all of the people that had lived before that were were gone and wiped out, and so they started over. Also tells us that there's no reason that God couldn't do that again. One of the things that we know is that people, we know it from the Bible and our own observation, many people are sinful, not only sinful, but arrogant in their sin. And that even those who are us, who are uh, Christian, we are still sinful. And we know, those of us who are Christian, how we 
overcome the sin in our lives, the only way we can is to surrender to Jesus as Lord and Savior and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and to be our counselor and to help us through these situations where we are tempted by Satan. So with that, we will close and uh, we thank you so much for watching and we hope that this was useful. And it's only useful if we turn to God and say, Lord, please lead us in your ways and help us to understand what you would have us know and do. And again, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Amen.